Hey, hey you guys welcome back to my channel so today i decided i'm finally gonna do the assumptions about me tag this was popular maybe a year or two ago but you know sometimes i just like to be really late to the party so i asked over on instagram what your assumptions were about me and i got some interesting questions so i'm going to answer those while i wrap presents because christmas is in three days and I have most of my stuff wrapped if you saw my last vlog I mentioned that I was pretty much done and I was feeling really good about my progress this year for Christmas but a couple gifts for Eric arrived just a couple days after that so I still need to wrap those so I have four boxes to wrap right now so I will do that while I answer these questions these assumptions <laughs> about me so if you are interested in getting to know me a little bit better keep watching all right so i'm not going to be showing you guys these gifts because eric watches these vlogs and i don't want him to see what he's getting for christmas so sorry honey all right i'm just pulling up some of the responses from instagram and if you aren't following me on instagram go ahead and follow me there i will have my instagram linked down below anyway let's see some of these i don't know if they're appropriate to mention in this video because they're from my friends and they were being sassy. Okay, let's just say that. So this person assumes that I am type A. And okay, so I have never actually looked up what that means, type A. I just hear it. I hear people talking about type A personalities and I would say that is right. I probably am Type A, I'm pretty sure I'm type A. I should probably look it up. All right, this is funny. I just Googled type A personality. I guess there's a type B personality too. The first thing that came up is this graphic. I'll put it right here. It says type A personality, and then it has this mountain, and the person who is type A is saying because it's there, and type B personality is saying because it's there, but type A is climbing the mountain, and type B is sitting beside it. So that pretty much summarizes <laughs> type A personalities and type B personalities. So yes, I would say that I definitely relate to the type A personality that sees the mountain or the task or whatever and is like, it's there, I'm gonna do it. That is very much how I am. But I'm not opposed to just kicking it back and chilling alongside the mountain. So I saw a couple other assumptions in these responses that have to do with personality so maybe we'll get to a couple of those okay this next one says you are driven and extremely kind and wow i am so flattered that i appear <laughs> driven and extremely kind on my social media because that is what people are assuming right they're assuming based off what they see me do here on youtube and social media like instagram and sorry this is kind of loud but i'm wrapping presents guys it's christmas time okay so i would say yes i'm very driven when i get an idea or there's a task in front of me that i want to accomplish i will most likely accomplish it um, and not stop until i get it done and i wanted to mention that i do feel very flattered that somebody said that i was driven and i was extremely kind because here's the thing, you guys, I have never really considered myself like naturally like sensitive or kind to others. I mean, I try to be, and I was raised by parents that taught me that kindness is very important. However, I am so driven that I can sometimes be selfish and not think about how others might feel and what accomplishments I'm looking towards or goals. I can put those ahead of how other people feel. And it's something that I actually am pretty aware of. Um, I'm not always perfect at it, even though I am aware that I'm like that. Um, it's something that is a weakness in my personality that I feel bad about a lot, if I'm being honest. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> this person wrote that I was driven and extremely kind wow especially extremely kind like i hope to be but like i said sometimes 
my drive to accomplish goals can get in the way of you know being sensitive and kind <laughs> to those around me because you know what some people just seem to get in my way when i'm trying to accomplish something so <laughs> That's just how I perceive it, but like I said, I'm aware of that and I'm trying to be better. Okay, I thought this one was pretty interesting. This person assumes that I am not going to get the COVID vaccine and they're probably right. I don't know if I will get it. I'm not opposed to it, honestly. I just, I never get the flu shot and I know this is so different and you know, I, I'm not opposed to it, but because I have had COVID recently, I am going to wait a couple months and not be, I guess I'm just not gonna be very eager to be one of the first to get the vaccine and it's not for any reason other than, you know, I've had it recently and you know, I'll wait till everyone else who hasn't had it, who would really like to get the vaccine, I'll let them get it. And if it's readily available, my doctor offers it to me, I probably will get it. So it's not something I'm avoiding, but it's not something I'm like standing first in line for. Okay. A lot of assumptions were about this. Uh, and that is you are planning a 2021 transfer. So a transfer, an embryo transfer next year. So yes, you are correct. Um, in assuming that we would like to do a 2021 frozen embryo transfer we do have two frozen embryos left if you are new here by chance we did IVF to get pregnant and we have two frozen embryos that are just waiting for us to transfer them and we'll do just one at a time but we would like to transfer one next year so in the next few months or so we'll see I'll keep you guys posted um, that's mainly what I talk about here on my channel so stay tuned so a couple more assumptions just like that that are like along the lines of you're going to try for another baby you're gonna try for another baby soon um, yes those are pretty good assumptions we would like to have another baby soon we are planning on doing IVF or a frozen embryo transfer for our next baby as well but we have been told by our doctor that we have undiagnosed infertility so there's still kind of a chance that we could get pregnant on our own who knows you know you hear all the stories about how people do IVF and then like their next kid they get pregnant with them naturally so we'll see we're not holding our breath but we are hopeful that that could happen we'll see you don't know again stay tuned okay this next assumption says you have a hard time making decisions and i kind of chuckle at this because i do not think that that is true i think that i am very quick to make decisions um for the most part if it's just a decision for myself it doesn't usually take me very long if it's only going to affect me obviously if it's a decision that might affect other people i will be more respectful of that but there are some times where um, the people, like the group of people that you're with or you're, you're trying to decide something with, they just want someone to make a decision and I am usually the one that will just decide. <laughs> um, I have no problem deciding that. Especially when it comes to my family, like my siblings, I have six siblings and we're all very close. And for some reason, my family, my siblings, they struggle to make decisions. So whenever we try to do something together as a family, they're like, they just struggle deciding what to do or whatever. They usually leave it up to me to make decisions, <laughs> which I don't mind because I'm type A, right? And I guess that's kind of a type A thing to do. I don't know. Okay, this next assumption is that I'm a true crime junkie. So yes, that is very much true. I love true crime. I spend a lot of time watching true crime on YouTube. My favorite is Bailey Sarian. I've mentioned her before, but she does her makeup while she talks about um, true crime stories. And honestly, I just love her personality. She's so funny. She makes me laugh. She makes me just, I don't know. Her videos are like 45 minutes long sometimes, and it's just a nice escape even though you're kind of talking about sad stuff. I don't know. Um, I just really enjoy her personality and so it makes her take on these true crime stories very interesting to me. 
so yeah i really enjoy watching her i also listen to a few true crime podcasts not so much lately to be honest i've mostly just been listening to youtube videos while i clean or do stuff around the house another true crime vlogger or whatever youtuber that i really enjoy is stephanie harlow i believe is her name and kendall ray i'm sorry i realize i watch these people but i don't actually read their name very often so Stephanie Harlow and Kendall Ray. I will link them down below, but they're really great too. And yeah, I just really enjoy true crime and it freaks me out a lot of times and I probably should cool it with the true crime because it makes me make up stories in my head and scare myself. But I also think it's good to be aware of what can happen out there. This world's a crazy place, guys. I mean, crazy place. My back is hurting because I'm just leaning over and slouching. You guys, I slouch so much and it's something that's always really bothered me. And I try to like be better with my posture, but I'm terrible. Have you guys seen those Instagram ads for um, a posture corrector? Maybe it's just me. Cause I think Instagram can see me and see what I need. And so then they feed me ads for posture correction because they're like, yo, you're, totally slouching so anyway i want to get one of those because then it will remind me to sit up tall all right i'm gonna answer one more because my back hurts i'm old you guys i'm getting old okay this one says you are an enneagram three or maybe one this is i love this question because i recently took the enneagram personality test or whatever it is and if you're not familiar with that i'm pretty sure there's nine and these are just like personalities or I really haven't researched it much. I just took the test and because I heard someone talking about it and I thought it was interesting. I love those personality tests. Like if you're familiar with the color code, I'm really into that. Um, as well as uh, Myers-Briggs. As far as color code goes, I am a red, yellow and Myers-Briggs, I am ESFJ. And if these mean nothing to you, I'm sorry. But to answer this assumption, it is kind of true. So it said you are an Enneagram three or maybe one. So yes, I am an Enneagram three, but my secondary was actually seven. Cause you can kind of, you know, have a mix of two Enneagrams or, I mean, you're a mix of all of them probably, but I don't know. Like I said, I didn't really do a lot of research. <laughs> I just took the test and thought it was interesting. So there's a YouTuber that makes content all around the Myers-Briggs personalities and the Enneagram and he is so funny he basically takes a situation and acts out how each personality would react in that situation it's really funny so I will link him down below too just because I think he's really funny and if you're into personality stuff you might really enjoy his channel so back to this assumption where they said that I was a three maybe a one I I'm actually like my second Enneagram that came up was a seven. And then I think after that, I'm trying to remember, it was like a couple months ago when I took the test or whatever, but I think it was like seven and four. And so if you're not familiar with Enneagram, a three is like an achiever, very driven, which some people have said and the Enneagram 3 also needs like validation and recognition and is kind of concerned about their image and they do things sort of to bring about a, a better image of themselves so that can be kind of a negative thing for sure but there's positive and negatives with every like personality trait and also this is not finite right this is just somebody's way to define personalities which like I said, is very interesting to me. However, it's not something I live and die by. And then I believe seven is kind of spontaneous. So seven is kind of like the yellow personality, which I, I'm half yellow, half red, um, which is like fun and spontaneous, which I don't feel like I'm that spontaneous, but I do like to have a lot of fun. Like I'm really motivated by fun and just entertaining people or being entertained. So I do feel like that is pretty consistent with the other personality tests I've taken. A lot of people do think I am Enneagram type one or whatever, but 
I don't even remember that showing up on like the higher end of what I related to as far as the Enneagram goes. Um, but type one is kind of like type eight personality, very structured and perfectionist. There are a lot of ways that I am definitely not a perfectionist. I'm more about like producing and getting things done rather than making it perfect. All right, I am almost done wrapping. So just have one more little piece of tape left. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight as I finish wrapping presents. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. I really appreciate you guys watching this video and let me know if you guys have any other assumptions you have and I will be sure to comment back and answer your assumptions about me. Until then, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.